Brazil, for example, you are talking about gigantic amounts of pesticide use down there. They use more pesticides in Brazil than any country in the world, any country in the world. And many of these pesticides are banned in 22 other countries. So you're talking about highly toxic substances in the very area where they're reporting all of these, um, you know, deformed births. So that's the first thing that you have to look at there, major importance. In fact, in my article, I quote a study that indicates that two pesticides, one of which is atrazine, that's being used in Brazil now, has been linked to babies being born with smaller heads. But the virus itself, the Zika virus, has never been linked to anything serious. It's been around since the late 40s. I mean, that's when it was first discovered. And since then, it's called caused mild symptoms, mild illness, etc. Nothing like this. And then all of a sudden, we get this story blowing up in the press. Oh, it's causing these horrendous birth defects and so on. No reason to assume that whatsoever. The virus becomes the cover story for what's actually causing what's happening. So I list pesticides as a main ingredient there. And I would also, because other researchers have uncovered this, like Jim Stone, for example, and other people, the TDAP vaccine, which was introduced in 2014 in Brazil as recommended for pregnant women, all pregnant women, a very toxic vaccine. You start to look at these different causes and vectors coming together incredible malnutrition, poverty, lack of basic sanitation, toxic pesticides, this vaccine, and so on. Now you begin to see what's actually causing these horrendous malformations, which we've seen in other places around the world, not just in Brazil, for the same reasons. The virus is always a fantastic cover story because people automatically salute it. Well, oh my God, it's dangerous and it's carried by a mosquito and we can't see it. We know nothing about it. We have to rely on medical authorities. If they ever come up with a vaccine, we'll have to get it, etc., etc., etc. All just uh, unthinking, mindless compliance with false science. So that's my opening shot on what's happening with Zika. Well, thank you, John. Well, we will definitely keep our eyes on any further reporting that you do investigating with this. And, you know, I agree. It, it sort of popped up out of nowhere. It'll be interesting to see if we're uh, going to witness more cases of microcephaly in other countries that maybe aren't using this particular pesticide or this uh, TDAP vaccine. Thank you so much, John Rappaport. No more fake news dot com. Thank you, Leanne. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Good 
Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here, late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things, and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Here to examine the Oregon standoff from a different angle, renowned investigative journalist and author John Rappaport. He's the editor of NoMoreFakeNews.com. So, John, thank you so much for being with us today. Now, we know that there are so many issues swirling around what's going on there at the, the Malher Wildlife Refuge with this standoff. Obviously, we've got the Bundys, the Hammonds, the, there's the federal land grab. Uh, in this particular instance, we have cattle ranchers who have been fed up with the abuse that they feel they're suffering uh, with the federal government. But I wanted to get you on the show to offer a different angle into not only what could be going on here and what's really behind this particular federal land grab, but others across the country as well. Yeah, this is the uranium story, Leanne. Uh, and it sounds improbable on the surface until you start poking down into it and you see what's really going on. Because it's understood and acknowledged, it has been for some time, even in the mainstream press, that the Russians, by whom I mean Putin, have gained control over 20% of U.S. uranium production. The New York Times ran a pretty big story on this a while ago, and uh, it surfaced and then it sank, as usual, without any real further investigation. But to dig into this, what we're talking about here is a company called Uranium One, which was a Canadian company. And during the time when this sale was being negotiated to Putin and Russia, this company, Uranium One, had outposts in the U.S. in uranium mines. So they were essentially bargaining to sell their company to the Russians so the Russians could in part control U.S. uranium production. And in order for that deal to be signed off on, one of the federal agencies of the United States that had to okay it because this is national security is the State Department, then headed up by Hillary Clinton. Step two. Step two is, during this negotiation, this period of time, some millions of dollars were coming into the Clinton Foundation from Canadian mining big shots. 
who obviously wanted this deal to go through and sell their company to Putin. Wait a minute, let's back off. Holy mackerel here. So the New York Times covered all of these angles. You know, they, they wouldn't step up to the plate and actually connect all the dots and say, you know, we're looking here at mass, deep criminality on the part of the Clintons and, you know, much more deep investigation to get courtroom evidence needs to take place. They just kind of dropped it. But as it turns out, in an article in IntelliHub by Shepard and Bellis, he links to a page, a federal page, Bureau of Land Management, that indicates that in 2011, this same company, Uranium One, met with local officials and people in Southern Oregon in the same general, or maybe even exactly specific, it's hard to tell, but definitely in the same general area as the Oregon standoff took place. And they were discussing mining opening a yellow cake uranium mining operation in that very area where the standoff has been taking place. So all of a sudden, this is a whole different dimension on the story. And you've got a much more sinister reason for the feds to be extremely concerned about what was going on and is going on in this area because it would not only be about all the factors you mentioned at the top here, but about uranium mining in the U.S., controlled by Russia, <laughs> with the Clintons involved. Wow, that is bombshell. And so obviously one of these, a lot of the things that we're hearing people saying is, well, that's our land and how dare they, you know, that land belongs to the American people. But here we have the BLM uh, taking ca uh, grazing rights and having to pay off the BLM, but actually now this company working with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, they made a presentation to the BLM outlining plans for the development of this mine. And so it says here, the Vail District has agreed to work with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife on mitigation for the new U uranium claims, which are located in core sage grouse habitat, on and on. So what are they doing, negotiating on behalf of the American people to develop a uranium mine in, with the Russians? That belongs to Russia, right? So the ultimate irony of this whole thing is that you've got these sovereign cattle ranchers and their supporters sitting there in this area saying the feds have no right to be grabbing this land in the first place and you know it's taking land away from the american people that belongs to the american people and they could very well be talking about russian land you know right. russian land under this uranium contract so who knows what the projection is going to be now that there's been this tremendous uproar in this area of Southern Oregon, which is another reason why the feds would be so exercised about this, because the last thing they want is national attention drawn to this area for any reason. Because if this uranium mining operation goes forward, and everybody learns, of course, that the production is going to be, you know, the uranium is under the control of the Russians. Now you've got things blowing up everywhere. Absolutely. And this was uh, another issue um, when when the Bundys were having to deal with that there in Nevada with Harry Reid. Then we learned that there was actually a solar farm being that was owned by the Chinese that was being erected on all of these lands that were supposedly being cleared out to protect the desert tortoise. And so it's actually these solar farms controlled by the Chinese who are giving energy to the people there in Nevada and other states. So I don't think we the people are gonna be getting a cut out of that and making our energy bills any lower. So how do they justify this? And of course, this gives a little bit of um, background when Hillary Clinton was asked about her relationship with Putin and she just kind of laughed it off saying it was a interesting, interesting relationship. Yeah, I would say more than interesting as it turns out. Well, you know, 